What's up, Rob here? Um, I wanted to do a quick video on the tools that you should have when you're assembling an engine. Um, this is just like a basic list of stuff that I would recommend to have. Um, you know, the, the stuff that I have, some of the tooling I have is relatively expensive. Some of it's not super expensive because we replace it all the time. Um, but this is uh, just like what I would classify as basic specialty tools that you should have um, for rebuilding an engine. So here's the stuff on the table here. So um, obviously you're going to need a couple torque wrenches. I just, I didn't set everything out here, but this is just a 3 8 torque wrench. I would recommend having, um, depending on what size of engines you're doing, but I would recommend having a quarter inch um, torque wrench, a 3 8 torque wrench, half inch torque wrench. Um, preferably, um, if, if you buy one of your torque wrenches, like you pay for your half inch one, digital, I'm not a huge digital guy, um, but I do like the digital torque wrenches because they give you your degrees. So if you have stuff that's torqued to yield, which a lot of newer stuff is torqued to yield, it'll have your degree system built into it. So you don't have to guess on your degrees or have a degree finder um, or a degree wheel to figure it out. So it makes it a little simpler, but um, this one is for checking um, piston protrusion or valve recession or piston recession, depending on what kind of engine. You can buy these off Summit Racing. This is a pro form one, it's not an expensive one. Um, I personally, you know, like it's a, it's a good one. We've replaced the gauge a couple of times, but it's just, it has little magnets on it. Well worth the money um, because if you're, you know, if you're putting a di especially a diesel together, you need to be checking um, because, you know, if the machine shop does a bunch of work for you, we do a bunch of work for you, whatever it may be, but we don't assemble the engine. We don't know what the piston protrusion is going to be, um, you know, in, in a gas motor it'll be sometimes will be recession um but regardless whether it's a recession or not um you need to know that you need to be writing that stuff down and then see on your valve recession or valve protrusion um there again depending on the engine um you want to be able to measure it so that you know you know if i got x amount protrusion and x amount protrusion and what you're allowed to have it gives you an idea when you're putting it together what you need to have for a head gasket um, you know, whether your valves are going to touch, you can tell that even before bolting it together and, and, and checking that stuff. So well worth the money you know, you have to buy a head gasket. That's worth the same as a head gasket. You do it once you're good. Um, a magnet base, um, with a, with a gauge on it there again, you can buy this stuff cheap. Doesn't have to be a super good base. Doesn't even need to be a super good gauge. Like it just needs to be a, a gauge that, you know, if, if you do a, a reference on it, it comes back to zero. You're good to go. Um, but this will, you, you know, you can check, um, crank end play with this. Um, you can do, there's a bunch of different stuff. You can tell when you're at top dead center, if you're checking, if you're degreeing your, your camshaft, which I will do a video on, by the way. Um, so the next one I do a set of calipers. This is a set of digital ones that do not need to be digital. I, I this is actually one of the few things that I do have that's digital. Um, just sometimes it's easier for doing uh, measurements quick because some crankshafts and, and parts are in metric and some are in standard. Sometimes it's easy to do a, a quick a quick conversion on it. Um, then um, we'll do, uh, so this is a bearing mic and it's an old one. It's been around for a long time, still works fine. But you can see on it where here, it's actually a round, a round ball. And this is actually for checking bearings to see how thick the bearings are. So when you check your, your, your line bore, your line bore is a certain size, your crankshaft is a certain size, and your bearing is a certain size. Well, if you take all those numbers, if you take your bore size and your bearing size on both halves of the shell, and then you take your crank size, you can figure out what your oil clearance is. And on race engines, we, we, we do that um, this way as well as checking it with a dial bore gauge. Um, so this is a, a small dial bore gauge that I, that, that I have. It's a snap-on one, and you don't have to have a snap-on one. It was just, it, I bought it, um, maybe an impulse buy, I don't know. And I hardly ever use it. As you can see, like it still has the, still has the plastic on the front, but um, nice to have an extra one if you need one. But um, this is something that you guys should have. You're building engines and you don't have a dial bore gauge, 
come on guys like this is like rudimentary stuff you can buy a, a you know a, an economically priced one a, a set you know it'll come with all this stuff you know they're not expensive there's no excuse not to have this if you're building your own engine um, but you know so you can check main bores with this a little bit hard with a short one for checking main bores but you can do it um, sometimes you'll have to take a cap on and off you know a couple times so you can reach everything um, you can check main bores you can check cam bores cam bores there are a little harder because it's so short um, but you should be changing cam bearings anyway um, but you can check your cylinder bores with this make sure stuff is in spec especially if you guys are doing what I call a dingle a dingle ball rebuild which I'm not a fan of but that's for another video um, you know check to make sure you don't have bad wear spots you don't have bad taper without one of these you're not checking it just Nate that's just the way it is I know some guys do you know they, they put a ring in there and then you check it to see if it's way looser and stuff like that uh, I'm not a fan of doing it just I, I would rather just do it right my personal preference that stuff is not expensive just buy the tool and then mics uh, there again you can buy a set of cheap mics this is a set of 10 that we have um, it's just a, I've just grabbed a couple different sizes you know you can buy a, a relatively economical set of these as well you know for like hundred and fifty two hundred dollars there again building your own engines this is stuff you guys really should have um, now last but not least of the stuff that I have sitting on the table is plastic gauge so after you have you know like if we're, like I said when we're doing a race engine we measure everything three times so we will measure everything before we assemble it then we put the mains together the rods together with bearings we use the dial bore gauge to measure compared to the crankshaft we write that down and then after assembly or after we we're starting to assemble it we, we actually go through and we use plastic gauge as well and the reason for that is is to make sure that our math worked we don't use this per se as a, a fix all check all type thing it's literally we use this to make sure that we have done the math properly and if something we put this together and something doesn't jive then we know okay we take it apart see what's going on and sometimes it's it, you know sometimes it's you miss it mixed up a bearing shell or something because not all bearing shells are exactly the same thickness so if that's the case you know sometimes this little piece of of plastic gauge you know could save a, a fifty thousand dollar engine you know an hour of your time and a couple dollars could save fifty thousand dollars in a race engine but you know if you're putting your own engine together even a couple thousand dollar engine you know is it worth the time to spend measuring i think it is the time that it spends to measure you know that the oil clearances are right your bores are right um you know that's one of those things now um something else now this we actually keep on the shelf when customers are coming in if they're doing their own work um, we have one that's similar it's just an older school one with a with a diamond wheel on it but you can buy one of these pretty cheap and you for doing ring gaps and if you guys are building engines there again you really need to cheap check in ring gaps um i guess that's actually something that i should have in a set of fuel gauges because some people maybe don't have a set of fuel gauges so set of fuel gauges there again we use these ones for the the surfacer but a set of fueler gauges you definitely should have a set of fueler gauges um and, and you know for setting ring gap and then everybody building an engine should have one of these because you know if you're setting in if you're if you're building engines and you're building stuff for boost you're building stuff with nitrous uh you're gonna run it hot you need to be setting ring gaps you know when you buy pistons you can't expect the pistons to have proper ring gap they do lots of times but you can't expect it because you will get that one set out of you know for us maybe four or five ten engines sometimes maybe that aren't right you'll have a set of standard rings in a 20 over box if you were just to stuff it back together you would have a huge ring gap now the other way around you have a set of 20 over rings in a standard box 
yeah, you're gonna break the rings either if you don't break them putting them in which you probably would um, you would if you did get them jammed in there the engine wouldn't last you'd it'd run 10 minutes and blow up but there again this stuff isn't expensive I think this was 85 bucks I think or 90 bucks something like that they're cheap I sell them for the same price as I pay for them because I would rather see guys make sure that they get the engine put together properly so you know like all the stuff on the table I would say you know if you were to buy three torque wrenches magnet base your a mic set bearing mic set you don't really have to have a bearing mic set because you can just you, you put your bearings in your in your housings torque it and then you can measure it and then use your use your uh, mics for checking oil clearances but if you want to spend the extra money well worth it in my eyes but there again we do it every day so a little bit different i would say everything's sitting on the table three torque wrenches with a good you know with doing economical pricing stuff i would say you probably between buying new probably be going to be eight hundred dollars worth of stuff now you could you could buy just the the uh, micrometers that you're going to use that you would save a little bit of money you could buy just a 3 8 torque wrench and a half inch torque wrench depending on what engines you're building um but the rest of the stuff and then you know like this and this toyo gauge you don't need an ex or a caliper you don't need an expensive set of those there again you can buy that stuff cheap and it doesn't need to be a 12 inch set that was just a set i grabbed um but the stuff that you really should have and i would recommend having this stuff um because it's if you want to build your own engines um i i really just i want guys to to be doing it properly um you know and not having issues because the big problem is is that you know guys have issues and then they blame the machine shop and not always the machine shop's fault if stuff's not getting assembled properly not getting checked and it's just way easier i'd rather you guys not have a problem and if you're assembling your own engines, uh, you know, you, sometimes you can find this stuff used. Like you can find, uh, you know, some torque wrenches used and save save money, providing they're within spec. Um, you know, you might be able to find a dial board gauge. You might be able to find a piston ring file. And there again, if you have buddies that are building engines too, maybe you can go halves on some of this stuff so that, you know, you you, you know you have three friends. You, you knock, you know, let's say, $800 worth of stuff. You know, three friends. Hey, man, that's not a lot of money. You got, and then you're doing stuff. And you can measure stuff and, and do stuff properly. Um, you know, it's really, I just like to see stuff done um, so you're not going to have problems. You know, like I hate for guys to put engines together and then they're like, oh, my engine blew up. Well, that sucks. It, it does. It sucks, to, you know, for, to, for guys to spend their the money that they do have and then the engines blow up and then it's just like, well, now what? Right? And I don't want to see that. So anyways, um, I won't go on anymore on that one. Uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, um, hit me up in the uh, comment section. And uh, yeah, have a good one, guys.